okay uh, we are live if there is anybody in the chat section please let me know am i audible and visible to all of you okay uh, just give me a quick thumbs up in the chat section so that i'll know everything is fine with my stream and when then we can start our today's session okay so everything is fine with my stream let's just wait for one minute so that more students will gather and then we'll start our session and if you have joined the session just share this session with your friends as well because we are going to uh, take all the topics which will help you in gate exam and you can score well that means you can score a good rank in your gate exam so we are taking these topics that are going to help you in exam and we are at the same time we are working on topics and simultaneously we are working on solving questions so it will help you to solve questions and you will know the approach how to solve questions right so this is gate launch youtube series for engineering mathematics this is last session and then later on we'll start discrete mathematics but you are uh, uh, you have other subjects in the series as well so you will get all those sessions so be available for that session time at the session time okay and if you face any kind of doubt anything you can post that in the chat section so that uh, i'll know that you are getting you are uh, having some questions okay so just let me know guys if everything is fine then we can start our session uh, good evening prashant okay so guys i'm sharing my screen just let me know if it is visible to you or not okay guys let me know if the screen is visible then we'll start our session so in today's session we are going to discuss about continuity and differentiability right so till now we have discussed all about uh, linear algebra and then we have covered one topic of calculus okay one topic of calculus which is limit and i told you that it has uh, they ask at least one question from limit in at, in every year and we have seen that because we have done previous year question for each of the paper <coughs> right so let's solve continuity and differentiability right so i hope all of you know limit because we are going to use uh, limit definition in continuity and differentiability right so what is continuity let's say if you have a curve and you can uh, you can trace the curve without lifting up n then we'll say that the function is continuous so let's say we have given this curve and if i'll trace the curve without lifting my pen then we'll say that the the curve is continuous right we can say that right so that is a definition that is a basic definition of continuity but the formal definition is that uh, formal definition is that if the limit of a function is equals to the function's value so that means if i let's say this is a curve and if i'll move to at this point i have to find out that function is continuous or not so i'll find out the function's value and i'll find out the left hand limit i'll find out the right hand limit and if all these three values are equal then i'll say that function is continuous right so to find out the continuity i have to check left hand limit right hand limit and the functions value at that point and this you can see here i have written limit extending to x not fx exists uh, so that means left hand limit is equals to right hand limit right it has the same meaning left hand limit is equals to right hand limit equals to fx not so that is my definition that limit extending to x not negative fx is equals to limit extending to x not positive fx is equals to fx not right so that's how we will define continuity of a function right and how we we'll, uh, let's say if i have to talk about the continuity of a function on the in an interval so if it is continuous from the point a to from the point b then we will say that function is continuous right in this interval and the function which are not continuous at any point we'll say that th those functions are discontinuous right i can take this let's say 
if I'll take fx is equals to mod x by x. Right? We have seen that uh, in the previous class that limit does not exist of this function at x is equals to zero. Limit does not exist at x is equals to zero. So we will say that this f is discontinuous. F is discontinuous at x is equals to zero. Right. So this is a definition of uh, continuity. Let me know if anybody have a confusion in the definition of continuity. Okay, so next we have this example. Let's check the continuity of the function at this breaking point. So just remember that whenever we have given a line, a quadratic function, that means if we have given a polynomial, all the polynomial functions are always continuous. So if you will see that from 0 to 1 by 2, my function is 1 by 2 minus x. So that means that is a line, right? So if it is a line, so that means it is continuous. So we have to check only at the end points, only the points where the line is broken. So at x is equals to 0, at x is equals to 1 by 2, I have checked and I have to check at x is equals to 1, right? So how would we check at x is equals to 0? Let's check at x is equals to 1 by 2. So what would I do? I'll write down limit x standings to 1 by 2 negative fx, right? And what is 1 by 2 negative here? Limit x standings to 1 by 2 negative. To the left of 1 by 2, what would be the function here? Function will be 1 by 2 minus x. So I'll write down here. 1 by 2 minus x and if I'll put the value I'll get the limit 0. Now similarly I'll find out limit x standings to 1 by 2 positive fx and for 1 by 2 positive when function is greater than 1 by 2 the function is 3 by 2 minus x. So I'll write down here limit x standings to 1 by 2 positive 3 by 2 minus x. So if I'll put x is equals to 1 by 2 here I'll get 2 by 2 that is 1. So here you can see that left hand limit is not equals to right hand limit. The function is not continuous. Right here function is not continuous. I hope you get the definition of continuity right. How continuity works. Okay. So yeah. So this is a question. These type of questions uh, are also asked by uh, gate exam that they say is that for what value of lambda is the function defined is continuous at 0. So, if you will see that if I, here I have given x is less than equal to 0 and uh, otherwise we have this function. So, that means whenever x is greater than 0, I have this function. So, let's see f of 0 is equals to, let's take limit x standings to 0 positive fx. Right? I can take any two terms because the continuity works. So, I can take either left hand limit equals to right hand limit or the function's value is equals to right hand limit. In general, I have this value limit x standings to 0 negative fx, right, is equals to f of 0 and equals to limit x standings to 0 positive fx, right. I have this. Now, to solve this, what I can do here, let's, uh, there is no need to check, take this whole term, so I am taking only this part. So, f of 0 will be, I can see in my function equality in the first term. So, I'll write down lambda 0 square minus 2 and for limit x standings to 0 positive, so whenever x is less than 0, I have this function. So whenever x is greater than 0, I have this otherwise function. So I'll use this 4x plus 1, right? Now, if I'll put the limit of 1, I'll get as a limit minus 2 lambda. So on solving, I'll get minus 1 by 2. So that's how we'll solve questions based on continuity, right? So there are two questions. Uh, there are two type of questions in continuity. Either they are going to ask that is the function continuous or not? And the second type of question is that they will give me the function is continuous and they will ask that uh, any constant value. If the function is con continuous, find out the value of ABC like this. Right. So let me know guys in the chat section that if there is any confusion. Otherwise, we'll move forward. So let's solve one PYQ. So guys, try solving this question. We have this PYQ here. It says that which one of the following functions is continuous at x is equals to 3. So we have to check the continuity at x is equals to 3 and it's your previous year question from gate CS 2013. You have to find out that which one of the following function is continuous. So guys, let's uh, check one by one. So if I'll check option A. So at x is equals to 3, I have to check. Let's take option A. 
so that means i have to find out first limit extending to 3 negative right to the left of 3 so to the left of 3 function will be x plus 3 by 3 x plus 3 by 3 if i'll put the value i'll get 2 as my limit and if i'll take limit extending to 3 positive i'll get x minus 1 right so if i'll put 3 so i'll get 3 minus 1 that is 2 and i can see that in this f of 3 is given to me 2 so that means this function is continuous right so option a is correct so if it is mcq you will take this option but there might be a chances that this question will become M msq so i have to go for option b as well so you can see that if in option b if you will find out f of 3 that is 4 right and if you will find out limit extending to 3 uh, fx so then you will get the function limit extending to 3 8 minus x right so it will become 8 minus 3 that would become 5 right so they are not equal so option b is not continuous can anybody tell me in the chat section that uh, this option c is continuous or not the function given in option c is continuous or not let me know guys again i'll take limit let's find out first limit so can i find out first f of 3 f of 3 will be x plus 3 because equality is there so f of 3 will be 3 plus 3 6 and if i'll find out limit x standings to 3 positive and to the 3 positive uh, to the right of 3 my function will be x minus 4 that means 3 minus 4 that is minus 1 so here if the function's value is not equals to the right hand limit so it is not equal because all three values should be uh, equal right so here if two values are not equal then i'll do not uh, try to find out the third one because it is not continuous right uh prashant it is not continuous right now, now let's check for option d is it continuous So if you will see here that if you will find out f of 3 in this part, option D, you will get 1 upon 3 cube minus 27. That means 1 upon 27 minus 27. That is 1 by 0. That means not defined. So f of 3 is not defined here. So option D is not continuous. So here only option A is correct. Right? Option A is the only correct answer here. Right? So here only option A is correct. So, if you have any doubt, let me know, guys, in this question. Okay. So, yeah, let's move forward. So, this is again a question. Like I told you, there are two types of question. Either they are going to ask about the definition of continuity, that the function is continuous or not, or they are going to ask you that at uh, if at a particular point, if function is continuous, then what would be the value of the constant? So, here, what you will apply? You will apply that f of so we, if you will read this question the question is what should be the value of lambda such that the function defined below is continuous at x is equals to pi by 2 so i have to find out the value of lambda such that function is continuous at x is equals to pi by 2 so what would i write down i'll write down f of pi by 2 is equals to limit extending to pi by 2 fx so i'll write this why i'm not writing left hand limit and right hand limit because i have given to the left and right the same function so that's why i'm not writing right once you will practice a number of questions then you will know that where you have to apply left hand limit and where you do not have to apply left hand limit so as you can see that uh, whenever we have given less than and greater than we'll apply left hand and right hand and in other cases we will not do that okay so let's solve this so f of pi by 2 is given to me is 1 i do not need to solve it but limit extending to pi by 2 my function will be lambda cos x upon pi minus x and just try to find out this limit and let me know in the chat section what will be the limit of the function we have discussed in the previous class that how to find out the limit just let me know guys how would you find out the limit here
just try to find out the limit guys so now if you try to find out the limit here you will see that we have given x standings to pi by 2 if you will write down cos pi by 2 that would give you 0 and if you will put pi by 2 in the denominator you will get again 0 so it is 0 by 0 form and we have discussed that whenever we will get 0 by 0 form or infinity by infinity form then these forms are indeterminate form and we are going to use l hopital rule right and what is l hopital rule l hopital rule is L Hopital rule is that if I have denominator and numerator in a function fx by gx, let's say if I have to find out limit extending to a fx dx and I'm getting either 0 by 0 form or infinity by infinity form, then I'll differentiate numerator and denominator and this limit will become this. Right. So I'll do the same thing here. Right. Uh, uh, right, Prashant. Limit extending to pi by 2 and I'll write down lambda and cos x differentiation will be minus sin x. And differentiation of denominator will be minus 1. So here minus and minus get cancelled. And whenever I'll put a pi by 2 here, sine pi by 2 will be 1. So here in I'll get lambda is equals to 1. Because left hand side is 1 and right hand side is lambda. So here I'll get the value as 1. So here option C is correct. Okay. So I hope all of you get the continuity topic, right? How to work on the continuity topic. So we have a little bit different question based on functions. Just try this out. Okay. So we have given a gx function which is 1 minus x and we have given a hx function which is x upon x minus 1. Then we have to find out g of hx upon h of gx. So try to solve this. Try to solve this question guys. So this is basically composition of functions. You have to apply composition of function and you would be able to solve it. So to find out g of hx, what you would do? Let's see. For g of hx, that means g hx is what? x upon x minus 1. So g of x upon x minus 1, right? And g of x is 1 minus x. So it will become 1 minus x upon x minus 1. So if I'll solve this, what would I get? x minus 1 minus x. So we'll get minus 1 upon x minus 1. And then h of gx will be? Right? That, that's how you will work on composition. Right? h of gx will be h of gx is what? 1 minus x. And then it will become 1 minus x upon x minus 1 plus x. It will become this. Right? Uh, right. So it will become, let's see, h of gx. gx is 1 minus x, minus 1 plus x. Okay. No, uh, there is some. Let's try it once again. So here in place of x, I have to fill 1 minus x. So it will become 1 minus x. Minus 1 minus x minus 1, right? 1 and 1 get cancelled. So it will become 1 minus x upon minus x, right? That's what we get from here. Now I have to find out g of hx upon h of gx. So let's solve this g of hx upon h of gx. g of hx we get here is minus 1 upon x minus 1, and in denominator we get 1 minus x upon minus x. So what I can do, I can write down here x minus 1 upon x. Can I do that? I'll take the negatives, uh, negative to the right hand, uh, to the numerator, right? So I can write down here to solve it. Uh, in, uh, okay, we'll get here x minus 1 upon x. So if I'll multiply, these, these two terms get multiplied and these two terms get multiplied. So we'll get minus x upon x minus 1 ka square, right? We get this term. So now I can see that neither this option is true and nor this option is true. Option B and D are not true. Can anybody tell me that how we are going to uh, find out that either A is true or C is true? Because I can see directly that B and D are not true. So what I'll do here, I'll solve for A. Hx is what? X upon x minus 1 and upon 1 minus x. 
So let's take minus common from here. So we'll get x minus one. So it will become minus x upon x minus one ka square. Right. So here option A will become true. And you can see that option C will not become true whenever you will fill one minus x upon x upon x minus one upon one. So these terms get cancelled and you will get minus one. So you will get minus one by x as gx upon hx. So here only option A is correct. And let me know, guys, if there is any confusion in this question. They do not ask generally these type of questions, but uh, as we know that we have composition of function in our syllabus, so they have asked this question. Uh, right, Prashant, A is the correct answer here. Okay, so I hope all of you understand this functions, composition of functions and what, how to find out continuity of functions. So let's move to differentiability, right? Let's move to differentiability. So anybody knows uh, how to check differentiability? So if you remember, we have studied in your 12th standard that at any point where we can draw a tangent, then we can say that the function is differentiable, right? So that means what is tangent? That I can draw a line which has a slope. So that, that means at any point, if I can draw a tangent, uh, the function is differentiable, right? So, but we have to check the function's definition of differentiability uh, informal. So, a function fx is differentiable at x is equals to a if the following limit exists. And the limit here is limit x standings to a fx minus f of a upon x minus a. Right? If this limit exists, we will say that the function fx is differentiable. Otherwise, it is not differentiable. And to check the differentiability, what would I do? I will find out left hand derivative and right hand derivative. Left hand derivative is nothing but the limit, left hand limit of this function. And right hand derivative is the right hand limit, right? We can work on that, right? But the definition is, and you can see that this is fx minus fa upon x minus a is nothing but a, a slope of a tangent, right? You can see that, let's say you have this curve and you have this point uh, a comma fa. And you if you have any point x comma fx, then uh, the slope will be, let's say the slope will be, fx minus fa upon x minus a, right? So that's how uh, this is a slope of a tangent. So if this limit exists, then we'll say that function is differentiable and otherwise function is not differentiable. And you can see that we have written left-hand derivative and right-hand derivative. You do not have to go through these terms. Just remember this. If I'll have to find out a negative, that means that is my left-hand derivative. If I have to find out a positive, that is my right-hand derivative. I hope this is clear to everybody. Okay, so if definition is clear, let's see one example. So tell me that this function is differentiable or not. Just try to find out the differentiability. So what would I do? I'll find out uh, left hand derivative. Left hand derivative. And again, we can see that whenever we get a polynomial function that is differentiable, but if, if it is breaking at any point, then we have to check at that point. So here I have to check at x is equals to 1. So that means I'll write down limit x standings to 1 negative g of x minus g of 1 upon x minus 1, right? So that is a left-hand derivative function. So I'll write down limit x standings to 1 negative. What is gx? To the left of 1, the function is x plus 1. And what would become g of 1? I can see that in g of 1, the equality is at this function x plus 1. So g of 1 will become 1 plus 1. That is 2. So that means minus 2 upon x minus 1. So if I solve this, I'll get here x minus 1, x minus 1. Numerator and denominator get cancelled and we are left with 1 only. Similarly, we'll work on right hand derivative. Right hand derivative will become limit x standings to 1 positive. g of x minus g of 1, x minus 1, same function, right? Same function. So I'll write down limit x tendings to 1 positive. G of x is what? 3x minus 1 minus g of 1. Again 2 and upon x minus 1. So if you will solve this, you will get here limit x tendings to 1 positive. 3x minus 3 upon x minus 1. Can I take 3 co common from the numerator? If I'll take 3 common from the numerator, 1 positive, I'll left with x minus 1 and x minus 1. Numerator and denominator get cancelled. I'll left with 3. So here left hand derivative is equals to 1. Right hand derivative is equals to 3. 
so these values are not equal here so we can say that they are not differentiable so left hand derivative is not equals to right hand derivative so i can say that gx is not differentiable at x is equals to 1 at x is equals to 1 okay so guys any confusion in this example yeah right prashant it is not differentiable okay so before moving on to the next one let's just discuss let me tell let me tell you okay let's do that later okay so the next topic is what is the difference between differentiability and continuity right so we have discussed that if the graph is not broken at any point then we'll say that it is continuous and uh, differentiability we have discussed if we are able to draw a tangent at any point then the function is differentiable so guys one more thing i have to tell you that for differentiability the graph should be smooth and what does i i mean with smooth let's say first let's say if the graph is broken if the graph is broken let's say at this point the graph is broken then i'll say that it is not continuous now can you draw the tangent at this point where the graph is broken no we can't do that so if it is not continuous it that means it is not differentiable right if the graph is not continuous it is not differentiable but there might be a chances that the graph is differentiable and there might be a chances that uh, graph is differentiable graph is not differentiable but it is continuous but it is continuous right so what i mean here that if it is not continuous then it is uh, always true that it is not differentiable but if it is not differentiable then we have to check that either it is continuous or not right let's take one example let's say if we have a function mod x the graph of mod x is x so at x, i can see that the graph is not broken at any point right the graph is not broken right so mod x is nothing but x whenever x is greater than 0 and minus x whenever x is less than 0 right so this is the graph of this function so i can say that this is continuous but it is not differentiable at x is equals to 0 because we have a sharp point here so whenever we got a sharp point in any graph then we are not able to draw a tangent at that point so that's why i told you that function is differentiable when it is smooth okay so that's how we we'll work on uh differentiability so if you need one example the function which is differentiable but not continuous that is mod x and you can check by yourself let's say left hand limit if you will find out left hand limit limit x standing to 0 negative let's take 0 negative function will be minus x so the value will be minus 0 that is 0 if you will find out right hand limit limit x standing to 0 positive and to the right of the function function will be x so you will get the limit 0 and for f of 0 again you will get 0 all three values are equal so you will say that fx is continuous at x is equals to 0 continuous at x is equals to 0 but when you will work on differentiability let's say you will work on differentiability that means you will find out left hand derivative left hand derivative will be f of x minus f of 0 upon x minus 0 and limit x standing to 0 positive so if you are limit extending to zero negative right so if our we are working on zero negative so that means we will have a minus x function minus x minus zero upon x minus zero x and x get cancelled we are only left with minus one right now when i'll talk about right hand derivative the function will be limit extending to zero positive function will be x minus zero upon x minus zero so we'll get the right hand derivative as one so here you can see that we are not getting left hand derivative equals to right hand derivative so the functions are not continuous uh where we will get the pdf of this class okay for uh, you i hope you all have written we have solved questions right there is nothing more in that so i don't think that pdf is required you can practice questions and i have taken all the pyqs and the topics which i have written i have not written anything more so you can write with me in the session so that because i don't think mathematics pdf is required right if you will understand right now then i don't think that there is need to go through the pdf okay yeah 
next is and if you want to go through the notes you can go for the gfg website and there you will find out all the notes we have listed here for all the subjects right and we have practice questions there as well i'll show you at the end of the session that where you will get all those things okay so guys and before moving on please like the session so that it can reach to more students and more students will get help so the example which we have discussed uh, this in the previous slide the same absolute function is continuous at x is equals to 0 but not differentiable at x is equals to 0 right this is a question from gate cs 2007 let me know which option is correct here i have discussed this so you should tell me that uh, where what is the correct answer for this question So what will be the solution for this question? Okay, so we know that it is mod x is continuous but not differentiable. So that means option A is correct, right? So here option A is my correct answer. Now let's move forward. So uh, there are two theorems which are important for gate point of view, which is Rolle's mean value theorem and next is Lagrange mean value theorem. So based on continuity and differentiability, let's discuss this theorem and then we can, uh, we can, we are able to solve questions from continuity and differentiability, right? So it says that fx be a continuous function, if fx be a function satisfying three conditions, three conditions are fx is continuous in closed interval AB. So that means fx is continuous in co continuous in closed interval AB and it is differentiable in open interval AB then and f of a is equals to f of b then we can say that that there exists c uh, between a and b such that f dash c is equals to zero uh, okay Prashant. okay so you can see that let's say if we have this graph so this is a this is b right so i'll get one point c in between a and b such that i'll draw a tangent and its tangent is parallel to x axis because we are getting uh, we are getting zero as a slope so that x axis has a slope zero so that means we'll get one point between a and b such that tangent at that point is parallel to x axis so this is the definition so they can ask that uh, find out the roles uh, find out the value of c in rolls mean value theorem or they can ask me find out a point such that tangent is parallel to x axis or they can ask something like that that find the uh, point where uh, the slope of a tangent is equal to slope of x axis right so it's up to you it's up to them that what they ask but now you know that how to apply rules theorem right what rules theorem says so let's see one question so we okay so now you can see that uh, find out c by rmbt point at which slope of tangent to function fx is zero and point at which tangent is parallel to x axis all three have same meaning right the previous one so in this question, what we have to do, we have to write down f dash c is equals to zero. So let's differentiate this. So let me find out f dash x. What is f dash x? E denominate. Let's write down. Let's do one thing. Uh, to find out f dash x, let's write down f x is equals to sine x e to the power minus x. Why I have done that? So that I do not have to apply. Uh, I do not have to apply the question rule. I'll apply here product rule. So f dash x is equals to sine x as it is differentiation of minus e to the e to the power minus x will be minus e to the power minus x and e to the power minus x i'll write as it is differentiation of sine x will be cos x so this is a differentiation now i'll write down by rmvt rules mean value theorem that f dash c is equals to zero right so i'll write down minus sine c e to the power minus c plus e to the power minus c cos c can I take e to the power minus c common from this equation? So let's take this e to the power minus c minus sine c plus cos c is equals to zero. And we know that this exponential function never be zero. This e to the power minus c cannot be zero. So that means minus sine c plus cos c is equals to zero. So that means sine c is equals to cos c. 
right and we know that in interval 0 to pi sin c and cos c let me show you the graph this is a graph from 0 to pi this is a graph and this is a graph of sin x and this is a graph of cos x so they are equal at c is equals to pi by 4 and they are equal at 3 pi by 4 a s t c a s t c Okay, but at 3 by 4, sine cos is negative. Okay, so yeah, we have done this. This is a graph of sine x from 0 to pi. And this is 0 to pi sine pi. And this is a graph of cos x, right? So we have this graph. From 0 to pi, it only meets at one point, which is pi which is pi by 4, right? This is pi by 4 point, c is equals to pi by 4. So here pi by 4 is my point, right? So any question that how to solve questions using rolls mean value theorem, let me know. Okay, so this is rolls mean value theorem. We have the same theorem, which is similar to rolls theorem, which is says the Lagrange mean value theorem. It says that let's say f is a function from a to b to r, from closed interval a b to r we are satisfying these condition now we only require two condition that f is continuous in closed interval a b and it is differentiable in open interval a b if continuity and differentiability works then there exists c then there exists c belongs to open interval a b that means we will get one point c between a and b such that f dash c is equals to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a so again you can see that uh, f dash c shows the tangent slope of a tangent at point c and f of b minus f of a upon b minus a shows the code uh, slope of a code so that means let's say we have this graph so this is a and this is b so that means it says that the uh, point the chord between a and b is parallel to the chord parallel to the tangent at x is equals to c right so we can say that the chord joining a and b is parallel to the uh, parallel to the tangent at x is equals to c. I can do the same, or I can say say that the slope of a chord is equal to the slope of a tangent at x is equals to c. Right? Any question, the formula is same. Right? They will ask any three points. Like I can see. Uh, so here, okay. So they haven't asked. So now we know that the slope of a chord is parallel to Either the chord is parallel to x, parallel to the tangent at x is equals to c, or the slope of a chord is equal to slope of a tangent at x is equals to c. Right? Both have the same meaning, or they will ask me to find out value of c using Lagrange theorem. Okay, so now we have to verify mean value theorem for f x is equals to x square. So what would I do? That means I have to check that there does there exist c belonging to two comma four such that f dash c is equals to f of b minus f of a upon b minus a right i have to check that so f dash c will be f dash x will be 2x so f dash c will become 2c and f of b will be f of 4 minus f of 2 upon 4 minus 2 right so we'll get that 4 square 16 2 square 4 4 minus 2 will give me 2 so that is 2c now on solving we'll get 16 minus 4 is 8 and 4 square 16 minus 4 that is 12 12 by 4. So we get c is equals to 3 and here we belongs to 2 comma 4. So that means uh, this mean value theorem gets satisfied. So guys, just remember whenever we are writing in general mean value theorem, that means it is Lagrange mean value theorem. If they will specify the that rose theorem, then you have to write down uh, Lagrange mean value theorem. And you can see that uh, Lagrange mean value theorem gets converted into Lagrange. Rolls mean value theorem if you will apply one more condition here f of a is equals to f of b so that means it will right hand side will become zero if i'll apply this condition so just remember that you only have to remember lagrange mean value theorem rolls mean value theorem you will get uh, if both the values if the both if both the values at a and b are equal then you will get it by lagrange mean value theorem as well so that means you do not have to uh, remember in separate rolls mean value theorem you just have to work on Lagrange mean value theorem. Okay, so we have this question. 
so you have to find out lagrange mean value c for this function and this is a homework question guys right? solve this and post the answer in the comment section after this session and uh, we'll discuss if you do not get it i'll get back to you and we'll discuss that then in our next classes which will be of discrete mathematics later on okay so that's all from my side if you have any doubt please let me know in the chat section regarding this session or regarding the preparation of engineering mathematics let me know guys if there is any questions okay so yeah that's all from my side guys after this session after this session okay let me share the discord channel link guys you can join the discord channel that would uh, work let me share my discord channel link okay just give me a minute So this is a discord channel link you can join the link here and if you face any kind of doubt you can post there okay so yeah any other question guys okay so that's all from my side thank you